like everything's good. Just waiting for a title to be set. Welcome uh, back, viewers. Once again, uh, Level and I, Devious Grill, casting for this evening's match between SA and FFE. FFE have an unpronounceable name for me. I just, uh, I, I won't even attempt it. The acronym is good enough. It's going to be a good match. This is for Div B. There's quite a lot riding on this match. Lots of things can happen towards the top of the board, depending on the, the final score. Uh, level's much more versed on this. Maybe you can explain it. Um, what am I explaining? Sorry, I was uh, double checking all the settings. <laughs> <laughs> You're explaining how the final score from this match can oh, affect Div B. Yeah, so it's been a wild ride in Div B. For 48 hours, right? 24 hours, sorry. 24 hours. So, it was expected that CXF and uh, CSPS would duke it out. Uh, it was expected that CSPS and CXF would duke it out for first and second. But something unexpected happened. CSPS got... Uh, CSPS lost 0-5. And that was not good, because what happened was a whole new series of events unfolded, which was SA now can get second place. If SA wins against FFE 5-0, they secure second. Now, at 4-1, which is what a lot of people think it was going to ha is going to happen tonight, um, it becomes a three-way tie for between CSPS, DPS, and SA. Uh... Because if SA gets second, then it's just a, a then it's just a tiebreaker between DPS and CSPS for third, uh, which I believe because we beat CSPS uh, in week two that we win on tiebreaker. Um, but if it's a three-way tie, we both SA beat CSPS three two. Uh, sorry, CSPS beat SA three two. SA beat DPS three two, and DPS beat. CSPS 3-2, right? So we have to go to the next layer of tiebreaker, which comes down to kills, and those haven't been tracked. I don't know how if those have been tracked so far, so we don't know the total kills each of these teams have. So depending on how th how this game goes, it can it can be a wild ride, you know? Uh, we we could see some we could see an interesting upset. Uh, if CSPS get a 5-0, they'll get second and they'll earned it. Um, but if they only pull 4-1 then it's a three-way tie. Uh, now, if they do any less than 4-1, uh, then it comes back to a tiebreaker for second with me uh, uh, with DPS and CSPS. So, again, it's it's all up in the air now because of last night's game. Yeah, it's going to be a tricky match, this one. Uh, lots to play for. Um, wow. Okay, let's see what happens. Uh, so first up is Forest Colony. Hey, yeah, let's take a look at the map, because yeah, first up is Forest Colony. Well, Already lines drawn on this map. Um, let's see, Team 2 side, Sigma and Kappa are uh, early takes if possible. And for Team 1 side, Epsilon and Gamma. There is a fight to be had over Theta. I think Team 1 has advantage on Theta. Or do they? Actually, no, I'm looking at Forest, not Viridian. <laughs> uh, team 1, if they want to go Theta, they generally have to go through the pass, right? Hmm. And that can be a kill box if the enemy have, a, have guys up here near Sigma. Especially like this little, like, town thing right here, mining base, whatever you want to call it. Um, you can, and then there's hills, you can get Overwatch over Theta pretty easily. So it can be hard for Team 1 to take it. Uh, team 2 can take it actually a lot easier, I think. Uh, it's a lot easier for, I think it's easier for Team 2 to get Sigma, Kappa, Theta uh, to start with. Um, it's easier for Team 1 to get Apsi and Gamma, but um, Team 1, there's a lot of cover here in the water, so we've been seeing a lot of people play for Kappa, right? From Team one side, so They'll go for Epsi, Gamma, and Kappa. Um, let the enemy team have Sigma, Theta. Uh, unless, you know, an opening happens, they can go for Theta. Doesn't Team 2 have... A, well, it, it definitely has a an advantage in terms of distance to Kappa from Alpha spawn. 
Uh, it's a bit tricky through the gully there down the, the river. Uh, Can be. Yeah, let's see what happens. One thing we've never seen is something cheeky like stacking people in Charlie Lance and going all the way around. It's something that uh, we used to do in faction play. <laughs> send, send a lance up this way, right? And then come around the back. No one expects it's not that. a bad idea, but it means you're out of the fight for quite a long time. Yes. I mean, you've, you've got to take the scenic <laughs> route through the ocean. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it can, can play very well if you get round behind Sigma or something. I mean, great. Team 1? They're not fully readied yet. We're still waiting on Unfearing. Okay, we got a green board from him. Is he going to lock so I can give team, let Team 2 know they're on the timer? All right, team one is locked. <laughs> Judas, caster is always blaming teams. 100%, of course. My job is to commentate on these matches. Everything else is not my job. Is the definition of not my job. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say your contraire. Our job is just to sit here and talk about things. <laughs> yeah. Teams run the match. We have no <laughs> say in any of it at all. Occasionally, we make we may choose to make a little bit of light fun because why not? But yeah, like the rivalry between uh, your team CSPS and my team DPS. It's been a it's yeah. been a good friendly rivalry all season. Um, yeah. Both teams trying to outdo each other constantly, I think, raised us both up in the end. I think we both play better. We both we in the attempt to be better than each other, we have both teams have been playing better overall. I think. Compared to previous seasons and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we've had a bunch of new players and we've made progress and I'm sure you have as well. Team two is locked real quick. Alright. We will be launching it here in one second. Okay. And good luck both teams. Uh Ooh, this is weird. Uh, team two at only 400 tons. Team one at 425. They are almost. They are a whole mech under ton right now. That is an entire light mech down. Yes. What strat do they have? <laughs> In SR. <laughs> I'm guessing. I'm, yeah, I'm guessing a brawl. Must be. Uh, if you go, if you get fast enough, and you catch the enemy unprepared for it, it does work, right? It's. it's that's why anyone does it. Therax, your internet acting up too. Um, same here. Uh, Nate, you're welcome. Always a pleasure to help cast games. I'm just trying to help do my part for the community, you know? My matches are over with, so I now have a little extra free time. When I'm done casting these games, I'll go hang out with my son. Because he is tons of fun. And... He doesn't question my maturity levels. <laughs> Alright, I'm looking at smoke adders here. Unfearing in the Annihilator 1A. We got a Black Lantern on the field and Captain Judas. It's almost his token mech anymore. Warhammer 6R by Quintus. I'm going to double check what that is. Night Gear, Firestarter, Veagle, and Wolfhound. What do we got over on the other team? Uh, we got Paintsucker Paint and a Black Lana. Uh, we got Paul Myers in a Vulcan. We've got Little Mick in a Firestarter. That's their wolf pack. And then we've got Mr. Space Rat in an Annie 2A, uh, Misanthrop in a Rifleman 2C, and what is that? Kid Kinzu, what is he? Is that a spider? No, that's... What are you in? Yeah, that's a spider. That's a, the capping spider. Okay, it's, so... It's a well, capping spider. that's why they're light. Capping spider. Look how fast it is getting Kappa, though. Yeah. Looks like they could be onto the cap game. Oh no, he can't run forward. If he runs forward, he's going to run right into a Black Lantern. He does not have... Oh, wait, did Rick see him? Rick sees him. This kid Kinzu has to bail. He cannot fight this fight. Kid, run, kid! Yeah, he has two MPLs versus five. And, and not anywhere near the armor. Now, I will give them this. They have uh, the Firestarter, Black Lantern, and Vulcan. Their wolf pack uh, just took Theta, so actually they're now sitting at the three cap, like I suspected they would get. Um, the spider, I don't know how much it's going to be able to help, because uh, instead of capping, he's sitting here holding the ground for the night gear. Uh, there is a strike on Kappa right now, but it is going to whiff. 
Um, see some LPLs from the Rifleman going out. Annihilator coming out of that pass. I don't think I've ever seen an Annie go through there. Not outside of faction play. Uh, he has taken some shots at the Unfearing Annie, but it's it's too far out, not a lot of damage. Um, this Annie has entirely too many bolt-ons. And that's why people get frame rate drops. Vulcan, um, whiffed. Little bit of backstory while we're waiting for the fight to really kick off. Pain Sucker I see is playing for FFE, that's interesting. He started off this tournament with uh, F-37, but they had to drop out. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to talk about that too much, but he moved over to FFE. He's a great pilot. Uh, yeah, uh, another F-37 pilot got picked up by RJF. I think Stash are in. I believe oh, that's okay. the one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it, I was really hoping to see F-37 uh, this season. But yeah, it worked out. Me too. Oh, Paint Sucker diving on the Rick the, and the Wolfhound. Wow, that was a huge alpha strike. Uh, here, here it is. Here it is. The the huge fight. Uh, Firestarter and uh, this Black Lantern. Black Lantern is getting uh, pulled away from the rest of his uh, his guys. Uh, and he might just get focused down. Rick is 60% in the Wolfhound. He ate a lot of hits from uh, Paul Myers and Paint Sucker. Uh, Paul Myers team is pulling back. Uh, did is okay. Old Man did not take the bait. He is waiting to, for to regroup now. Um, Annie is moving forward. Uh, it does look like SA might just be getting aggressive here. Uh, Unfearing's Annihilator 1A is one large laser, four ear medium lasers, and two heavy goss. I have never seen a build like that before in my entire history of MWO. That is interesting. Uh, Vapor Eagle here, uh, Vindicated, is actually starting to look a little banged up. It's mainly his arms, so he should be okay. FFE's wolf, wolf pack has pulled right the way back here to Sigma, maybe a little bit too far. They can't really engage and do anything, and they need to push back into the mid-ground, or the rest of the team is going to get focused. Yeah, they are getting a little far. The uh, Annie and the Nike are out in the water. The Annie is actually really banged up. Uh, double Trying to double-check his health right now. He's down to 5 AC2s and 3 ER Meads. Uh, Nike is trying to give him some cover, but unfortunately, uh, we're seeing the same thing we've seen on a lot of other drops uh, this season, where uh, PPC mechs and their pop tart, their ability to pop tart and get into cover, is dominating the AC2s. Um, the Snyder is just not not able to return fire on mechs that are only exposed for about the time it takes him to fire, you know, six AC2 shots at once. Psycho. Looking at the armor, Smoke had a seem to be at a slight disadvantage here. Apart from the Annie on uh, FFE's side, who's heavily damaged, they're looking decent. Now, Psycho's night gear is almost side torsos. It looks like he's doing the dual laser, dual goss build. Um, I think we ran that against you guys, actually. Uh, so, this is a, only the third time I've seen that. I think RGF ran it last game. Uh, Paul Myers, the Black Lantern, and the Firestarter, I think they're stuck on the cap too hard. Black Lantern, yeah, oh, gets taken down. down. Vulcan and Firestarter. Uh, Firestarter is legged, I believe. Vulcan is, is in there just trying to help, but uh, Judas and Old Man, me, old man are uh, they're just dancing around them. Little Mick, Mike goes down. Uh, Paul Myers goes down. That is... I. That's uh, FFE's Wolfpack uh, gangs there, gone. They're, they've gone now. Uh, this is a big problem for FFE. I mean, they have that one capper, but there's still nine minutes on the field. Uh, so there's not much he can do uh, unless unless these mechs somehow manage to uh, gank uh, SA's lights, but I don't think SA even needs to risk him at this point. Uh, Mr. Space Rat trading as best he can, but he's damaged quite severely. I suspect he's going to go down soon. Let's see, who else do we have? Dr. Kara, also heavily damaged. Yeah, yeah. Kara goes down. Almost took Psycho with him, but Psycho managed to uh, get the shot off first. Again, we just watched what happens, the difference between um, sustained DPS with AC2s versus... Uh, a pinpoint front-loaded burst damage from Goss. Uh, just unfortunately couldn't compete. This Annie is 
he's not much longer for the world. He's all he can do is just kind of hold here and hope something gets close enough that he can maybe fight. But that's not going to happen. Aquilus with his uh, Warhammer six R. Now that is a weird Warhammer. He's running five medium lasers, not six or four. So one. So he's running with one stripped arm, and I'm pretty sure it's the smoking one. I think FFE have got that in the bag. I think they're going to win. They've got a spider. 94%, 91%. <laughs> uh, if they Go were on. if they were a little further ahead on caps, I would think so. Uh, where is the spider now? Spider is being chased by the Black Lantern. Now, if the spider's max engine, it should be able to run away. But which way is he going? Okay, he's going to go the wrong way. Uh, he should have cut up towards Epsi's. I don't think he could have took Epsi, but he could have. See, now he is turning around, but I think it's too late, because now Rick is right in between them. Spider is a tricky proposition when you're looking at mechs to choose for your comp roster, because, well, yeah, it takes cap acceleration, and that can be useful, but you lose out on a lot of firepower. Once you're down to this stage, the spider's essentially useless. It hasn't got the firepower to take out anything, really, unless your opponents are heavily, heavily damaged. Whoa. So yeah, there goes the spider, by the way. Is that a headshot? No, back shot. Back CT, one shot. What? That was a good shot. Yeah. Missing this... throw up now in the rifleman. He's doing what he can. I just realized that rifleman's still alive and way, way back here. Yeah. He, he's been pushed beyond his spawn. Now, can he finish off Rick before he dies? I don't think he'll manage it, but he might be able to... Maybe. Can he? Nope. Oh! Oh! He did! He did! He did! 6-1 <laughs> ah. in SA's favor, but that was actually a lot closer than I thought it was going to be. Um, I think they lost in the Mech Lab FFE did. I think instead of AC2 mechs, they should have gone with more pinpoint. Um... I think, I think that's the big difference they needed. Uh, and I don't think they needed to uh, uh, send their wolf packs uh, to the opposite side to Theta. They probably could have played, maybe sent one guy for a back cap or something, but we'll go over that in a second. Uh, let me get these uh, APIs submitted so we can look at them post-game stats. Oh, I did it again. I left the wrong HUD up. I'm sorry it won't happen again. I'm sorry, chat. I'm sorry. <laughs> Having a quick look on my screen, the spider did 20 damage. That's not a useful comp uh, mech, in my opinion. 20 damage, I don't know. It, it's not good enough. If uh, I'm not, I'm not taking any way, anything away from kids, Kinzu as a pilot, but uh, yeah, uh, they took a risk of that and it didn't it's, pay off. There was t well, I tried the spider this season too myself. Um, the way when I was using it is when, um, when I expected to be able to hold the enemy team at trading right, and then use it predominantly to go steal back caps when the enemy team um, left an opening, and then pull mm -hmm. back, and then that forces the enemy team to pull a couple of mechs off to go take that back cap back, and usually they'll have to pull a couple of mechs off because. You know, they don't know if that mech is still there hiding in an ambush, so... It, it, very situational. It can work in very, very situational, um... Well, situations. <laughs> yep. It has utility, but uh, it's not good in a fight, and... At the end of the day, comp is about fighting. Uh, I wouldn't take it personally, but... Uh, yeah, it's interesting to see it play. Background DPS is no bad for all pop target power. That's true. Thank you for the shout out to the DPS. Even though I know that was unintentional. <laughs> yeah, pop target like it's 2014. Yeah, basically. Um, with, with weapon changes, uh, you basically uh, you you want to expose as little as possible. Uh, that's the meta right now. So to speak, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not king of, of like the, the, the meta or anything. So take this with a great assault, but like, yeah, uh, I think that, uh, pinpoint front loaded damage is definitely taken over from, um, 
last year where it was last year particularly it was very big on D dps right mpl boats anything that could just get raw damage out so you can drop mechs quickly that's what won games but we're seeing that um get pulled back a bit uh, we actually don't see as many mpl mechs in general because uh, a lot of people are switching over to like clans small pulse on like um the Black Lantern or Small Pulse for like the Firestarter and stuff, so definitely it's been interesting. Alright. Now let's get the map strat here. Like, what, what, what do you think is going to happen? Okay, I see what you have here. Um, yeah, let me delete the blue because the blue is from last game. Did you just delete it yeah. all. Let's start again, shall we? <laughs> So, what are we talking about? Team 2, Side Sigma and Kappa, obviously, early caps. Uh, from Team 1 side, Gamma is going to be early. I guess they're going to push Epsi. And then we're down to a fight over Data. Are either team going to push an early mech and try and cape, cap it, or are they just going to try and deny? Um, yeah, couldn't call it. This is where maybe the spider has uh, some kind of early roll if they play it again. I suspect not because it performed so poorly last drop. Um, this is typically in quick play a tradey game. There's sometimes a push across the middle. Um, gosh, I, really, I couldn't call it between these two teams. I'm not familiar with either of them very well. Um, FFE is um, Div C team out of water. Um, right. They, they now I will say this: they they put up a good valiant effort in Div B, but I think they needed a, a they needed Div C this season um, to help build up their team a bit more before they were ready for uh, Div B. But with that said, um, they they do like pushing a bit. Um, they have a lot. They run a lot of Div C style strats. Not, not that's not to um, discourage anyone or say like Div C is w any lesser than any of the uh, than the other divs. But there's uh, certain types of strats, um, like certain types of strats and compl complexity of strats. You can kind of get a feel what div you're watching just by what you see the uh, teams do on the field, um, and with with their team, they do a lot of the Div C stuff, you know, rush points, um, and they're still running a lot of AC2 mechs. Uh, you see that a lot more Div C, less than the uh, Div B and stuff. Well, we occasionally still see like the AC2 riflemen, but um, lately we've been seeing more like the LPL riflemen over that, or uh, people taking the night gear over the riflemen entirely because it has uh, more mobility, and you can do a lot more with it, uh, like Goss PPCs or Goss lasers. Yeah. Actually, the lower division matches are often the most fun to watch and cast. I mean, there are some crazy things that go on there. It's so much fun. Mm -hmm. um, if if you want to get into competitive, uh, get some friends together and form a team and go for it. It is a lot of fun. Absolutely. Highly recommended. Uh, if you're a unit, if, if you have a unit that you have, you know, 12 guys, Worlds is coming up. That's all you need. 12 guys, go have fun in Worlds. Go check it out. Um, now, with Worlds, it's the comp queue. Alright, Team 1's ready, and Team 2. Uh, with Worlds, it is a queue. Now, there's an ELO system, so, you know, if... Unless the only other team in the queue is a team like EMP or SA or something, um, you're usually matched up with teams that are around your same skill level. Um, the first, the first couple days of comp queue can be a little wild, because everyone starts out the same ELO. So, you know... You can get matched. You can be a, a a rewards team or a Div C team or a Div D team. And you can accidentally get matched up with JGX, but they're not going to take a lot of Elo from you because the because at a certain point, you know, once they get a couple hundred points higher than you, they at most they can take one. But yeah, I highly recommend anyone who's interested in organized games like this. It's it's you can't explain how different it is from like get quick play, faction play, and all that other stuff. It's yeah. 
it's great. It really is a lot of fun, and it hones your game, and you get uh, there's so much to be had from it. Mm -hmm. Also, there's a big incentive this year. I'm trying to find the graphic, and I can't. I looked at a graphic uh, recently, and it it I think it was the oh uh... five five hundred teams get a really good reward. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to have 500 teams. We but, uh, never do, we do, so everyone's guaranteed the top 500 reward. Everybody is. Yeah, everyone gets a really solid reward. Uh, both teams are ready, so I'm going to punch this. All right. Frozen City, drop two. Here we go. SA is ahead 1-0 to FFE. Uh, can SA 5-0 FFE today, or can, they, or can FFE hold them to at least one loss and force a three-way tie? For second place, I hope so. I hope so too, because that would make that make Div B super interesting. Okay. All right, I know casters aren't meant to root for anyone; we're meant to be neutral. But I'm kind of I'm kind of rooting for FFE on this last drop. Absolutely. Well, I'm rooting Come for FFE the whole time. They they <laughs> like I said, they've been a fish out of water for a while now, and It'd be nice to see them get get a couple wins, get their uh, morale back up. Looking over here at Smoke Adders, they got a Wolfhound, Night Gear, Commando, Black Lantern, Annie, Stalker, and Veagle. They have definitely gone for the range game. What do we got on FFE side? FFE, we've got the Firestarter, Linebacker, Phoenix Hawk, Vulcan, and Wolfhound. They're going for a Brawl Strat. They're pushing in. This is a classic... Uh, Div C strat, it can work on this map. What else do they have? Their two fatties are an Annihilator 1P, that's going to be lasers, and a Direwolf Prime. Uh, looks like it's running Daka. FFC making an early push straight across the map towards Theta. Uh, they could. Little spread maybe... out their Congo lined a little bit, and uh, yeah, SA already has three mechs uh, by Theta, so see what happens. All right, now they got four up here. They just got to pick a mech, and they just have to jump it. FFE, Five pick a mech here. and jump it. Just pick a mech and jump it. Come, don't let them pull you out to where their long-range guys can shoot you, too. Pick a mech and jump it. Come on. Come on. Go, Captain Judas. Get him, get him. Yeah. Firestarter getting hammered into real hard. Uh, FFE, they're backing off. They're backing off from their brawl push. No, 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 no. That's not, you can't do that. Oh, they're letting SA they're letting SA get away. And SA's mechs are gone. There are still a couple long range traders over here, uh, near Sigma by FFE shooting in. Um, they're hitting Rick a little bit, but uh, looking at the health here, FFE lost a lot of HP for a push. That stalled and then eventually uh, they gave up on. Um, now Looks their like firestar is legged. Yeah, a little Mick in the firestar is legged. He's out of the action. Oh, this could have been a really good brawl push, but they hesitated. Um, that's a that's sort of a serious mistake when you're doing a brawl push. You have to. It has to be full commit, commit no matter to. how it goes. You go yeah. all in. It's all in. It's the only way it works. Sa now. Now getting a, a firing line around of it in a semicircle. If you look at the mini map, yeah, uh, I mean, there's two mechs over here that they still have two assault mechs, but these guys right here, these four are about to get surrounded and picked off one at a time. Um, I'm I'm not sure if there's anything they can do to turn this around. Uh, Paul Myers getting lit into pretty hard. Pain sucker goes down. Um, Old man in the commando, he does get legged, they'll, they'll at least take out the commando. Paul Myers uh, backing back off in the cover, and they do pick the commando. Uh, 20 tons for 65 is not a good trade. Uh, the wolfhound is almost dead, and the fire starter is still legged and out in the middle of nowhere. Oh, he's walking across the field now. Um, I don't think there's anything he can do. Now, these three might be able to still pick off uh, Judas and the Black Lantern. Let's see what his... Uh, yeah, Firestarter goes down. Black Lantern, both legs are wide open on the, on the Black Lantern. Psycho in the Night Gear does get taken down. Um, 
But Paul Myers finally goes down too. The Vulcan and Phoenix Hawk, if they could focus the legs of the Black Lantern, they can at least pull the Black Lantern down and even this match out a little bit. And they might have a chance to still win here. Um, SA, they're running away on cap, so no matter what FE, FE does, uh, they have to do something at this point. They still have the, the Andy and the Dire Wolf trading across the top. Uh, they got to somehow utilize that with their with, with, with what's left of their uh, fast movers. Judas doing real good keeping his mech out of the line of fire, but um, but with those both those legs open, this Phoenix Hawk and Vulcan just need one, one good angle to end Judas's uh little killing streak there. The Quintus backpedaling pretty hard. His CT is almost cored, so if these guys can finish off Judas's legs. They might be able to finish off the Stalker too. Uh, again, this is it's a bunch of ifs. Uh, the initial engagement did go bad for FFE, but uh, at this point they are they're just holding on for dear life. Uh, they're, they're hanging down there in the low ground. They're, they're drawing Captain Judas into fire from across the other end of the valley. I mean that's a good move. I'm not sure if it's deliberate, but it's working. The uh, the stalker Aquintus has taken a lot of damage now. He's in trouble. Yeah. They could pick him quite easily and then go for Captain Judas uh, if they make the charge. They have to commit. That they're, they're they're being too tentative. Come on, fellas. Phoenix Hog, I can see why both his legs are in the same shape as Judas's legs. So it'll come down to a quick draw contest. Who can fire first? That'll be who takes it out. They're going it. They're going it. Here we go. All right. Here we go. Focus, Judas the first. There, they got. They got one leg. They got one leg. Oh. Can they get the other? Can they get the other? Okay, they got Judas. Now they just got to CT the stalker. All nice. right, all right. It's three to four now. It's three v three, but Smoke Eaters has a commanding, commanding lead in the caps. Uh, there's a Veagle, Annie, and a Wolf out, so SA still have one fast mover. Um, we are falling to the same issue as the last trap, where FFE pulls it fairly close, but all that's left is their big boys. Yeah, all the traders are down. It's going to be uh, trading. F well, all the uh, all the Wolf Pack down. It's going to be a trading fight now, and uh, looking at it, I think uh, if they're not careful, that uh, smoke editors are going to take it on caps. If he only have Sigma. Now, well, I don't seen it. I don't think the push idea was wrong. Uh, I would have probably went up to the seven line and then come at him with uh, keeping the buildings. Uh, but what they did, I've I've done that same strat, the same pathing before. FFE, you you flinched, and that cost you. I, I really do think if you didn't flinch on this push, when you guys are coming up right here, if this didn't stop, you guys could have uh, finished off that Black Lantern and their fast movers, and this would be a different story. Uh, Annie is almost completely gone. There he goes. A direwolf does. Does direwolf go manage one more kill? Um, he might be able to on this Annie. He is charging it with eight UAC twos. That's a that's a spicy direwolf with eight UAC twos. Is. There he is. Now he's double tapping. But I think the Annie's going to get away. Yeah, it's just another it's another case where the AC twos aren't working out in their favor. Um, Annie got just one alpha off and then backed off. But in that one alpha did more damage than that direwolf did with his uh, eight UAC twos charging him. Um, GG's SA. That was a lot close. It was closer than I thought it was going to be at the start. Um, a little disappointed in the push, but FFEs they still fought SA down to uh, three mechs. I thought after that push fail we we're going to see another 7-0 wipe, but that is not the case. No, that was uh, that's actually pretty solid. Good performance. Good damage off that die wolf did 857 damage. I mean that's well, that's good. Uh, on the SA side, the Annie One P did 873. Wow. Otherwise, a decent damage spread from both teams. It's uh, it's just a shame about FFE's wolf pack push. Um, if they had been a bit more confident and just gone in, gone in there and not uh, hesitated. 
it could have turned out differently. But anyway, uh, well played both teams. It was a good match to watch. Thank you, fellas. Maybe that's a little better. Okay. I was my mics was starting to pick you up through my headset, which was weird. I wasn't doing that earlier. But it looks good now. Uh, yeah, looking at the da looking at the post match stats screen. Um, yeah, uh, MVPs was Unfearing and Kara Carcass, Doctor Kara Carcass. Now I gotta swap teams, and then the map. Let's get the team swap first. Right, Viridian Bog. Now, Viridian Bog is a map that you can actually push, you know, easier on than a map like Alpine. So if FFE commits to their push, if they push on on this next map and they commit to their push, I think we'll see them uh, just steamroll over SA. They just can't, they have to commit to it and they can't give SA the chance to um, form a firing line, which is un which is what, unfortunately what happened in the last drop. Um the yeah, Viridian brilliant. Bog is tricky. There's a lot of verticality on it. Uh, you can see a push coming from miles away if you get in the right position. Um, but uh, we'll see how it turns out. FFE have to try and pull out a win on this map, the next three maps, actually. Yeah, if they can pull out a win on the next three maps, they can still win the match, for sure. Oh, yeah. McGraw with literally not enough players, possibly 500 teams. Uh, then you haven't been keeping up with how much um, the population has grown since uh, we started, since the, com the community patches started going live. Because there's almost, almost double the population there was, which is fantastic. And it's still going up. So I, as long as we keep doing these changes, the, well, not we, because I'm not part of the cauldron. As long as cauldron keeps doing these changes and the community still keeps liking them, um, we're going to see the population keep going up. As the population goes up, PGS to give the game more notice. And just overall positive effect. Yeah, there are more map, map updates coming, and there's the uh, the resizing pass, and there are more uh, weapon passes. The jump jets. There are interesting times ahead. Oh, yeah, jump jets too. Flying highlighters again, boys. Well, not, not to the extent they were back in the day, right? In like 2014, but. Assaults are getting their jump jets massively buffed, which I is never a got long to see time that. coming. I missed out there. Uh, I've, I've had it described to me like people flying across the maps. <laughs> uh, there's an there's an old YouTube video I watched once. Someone showed me of uh, Highlander doing it. It's like a clip video. Someone who used to play the game back then a lot made clip videos. Uh, so pretty funny. Now, are they ever going to add Death From Above in the game? Where if you jump jet on a mech, you do, like, you know, a lot of damage to it? That would be nice. I'd love to see that. <laughs> I've only ever seen it happen once where someone jump jetted on a flea. Um, that was, like, one-touch CT, and it actually died. Melee would be great in this. I'm not sure how they'd implement it, but it would be fun. <laughs> Yeah, melee would be pretty good. Um, let's take a look at the map strap while we wait on these two teams. Let's show the people Viridian. I'll delete my work of art from last time. Let's see, SA is now team two, right? Yeah. So SA will, will have will have this side. Uh, I expect them to go for Kappa Theta S Sigma. I expect them to to work real hard to cold Theta. Um, FFE, I'm not sure. They might try to do the Sigma Gamma Theta thing. Um, but I do think that a, a coordinated well-timed push is will, will be what they need for victory. Because um, they unfortunately, SA's uh, roster is a much stronger roster. So if they get stuck in a trading war at long range... Um, it will not be good for FFE, so they cannot. They don't want to play SA's game. Uh, they want to try to make SA to play their game. That'll be the best.
Um, now let's take a back, just look at the lobbies and see where we are at. Uh, team one is locked. Let's see, uh, Team 1 is at 445 tons. Now, SA is at 465. Uh, again, SA is going to be more tonnage, which is also a little... Just, just something I've noticed casting games for the last couple of weeks. Um, the team with the more, most tonnage is winning the majority of the time, right? So, you, it seems that it is important to be smart with your tonnage, too. I mean, yeah... There's 40 ton max that can out medium a 55 ton medium, you know, but still got to be. It's all about how you utilize that tonnage to its best. Yes, I take it as a rule of thumb that if you've got the tonnage on the table, then take all of it. Uh, at least try to. Unless you've got a really specific strat in mind, then you can drop some tonnage. But um, yeah, try and take all of it. For sure. Every extra ton you take. Uh, if it doesn't translate into speed, then it translates into extra armor at least, and that's mm -hmm. that's useful. I've got a bunch of moped riders and no exhaust pipes uh, riding around outside my house, and I'm going to close my window because fuck those guys. <laughs> so I'll be right back. Now with four in Alpha and three in Charlie, Team One's perspective. Uh, it doesn't look like... Oh. If they were putting someone in Bravo, I would say they're going for Epsies. With 3 in Charlie, um, and 4 in Alpha, that is telegraphing to me. Uh, they are going to be pushing. Uh, and maybe trying to get to the Echo 5. Uh, I'll show you guys on the map. I think they're going to be trying to get here. Take this position and maybe deny Theta, uh, but with no one going to FCs, or at least it doesn't look like they're sending anyone to FCs, uh, they could be hard pushing in. Um, and maybe this time will go better. Right, window closed. Peace and quiet. Nice. Tranquility. Oh. <laughs> uh, my tranquility ended. My son and girlfriend got back home. <laughs> He's, I had to mute my mic for a second earlier. He was yelling for me. The dad with home. <laughs> Ooh. SA, full green board. They're stacking Bravo Charlie. So they're stacking the high ground area. So they'll probably be playing for Sigma, Kappa, and Epsis then. They are now ready too. Um, Alright, I'm going to punch it. Punch it, Chewy. Yeah, I had to go double check, make sure my overlays were okay. Because, um... Well, because of earlier. <laughs> I'll let that one overlay on. The one that no one likes. Well, they like it, they just don't like it when the match is playing. And I don't blame them. There are so many moving parts to streams. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it can be tricky. Yeah, just to run this cast, there's one, two, three, four, five overlays. Five overlays, and then you've got the map strats, and you've got uh, the scoreboard. And all those things. Oh, happy days. Yeah. But well, we enjoyed it, so we do it. Absolutely. Uh, looks like Rick, uh, both teams saying good luck, have fun to each other. Very sportsmanlike. I'm always down for stuff like that. So I'm looking at smoke adders. They've got an executioner, a night gear, a black lana, a summoner, a wolfhound, an annie, and a fire starter. Uh, for FFE, we got a a Jenner 2C, Summoner, Annihilator, Madcap, Firestarter, Linebacker, and Nova. That Nova can be very deadly. Uh, let's see what's on it. It doesn't look like it has AMS, so they're not worried about missiles, but it's SA. But it's 12 clan small pulse lasers. Um, that thing will be super deadly if given a chance to farm. Uh, it is a super squishy mech. I think like 52... HP in the uh, or 52 armor, the CT or side horses, but so 
but it's definitely one that they're going to want to get off the field quickly. Now, look at over here, Kid, uh, the fire starter, definitely ran right into uh, SA. SA is, ooh, they're going to take this high ground here uh, between Kappa and Sigma. It uh, looks like the Executioner is going to take up this trading spot. Uh, Black Lantern is going around the backside towards FC. They're going to take that back cap, so FFE, and they, and I was wrong, uh, SA did not care about Theta and is not even going to play it. Uh, Annihilator is already starting to get some trades off. Um, but looking over here, here we go. Ooh, is this the push we've been asking for? Is this the I hard so. push? You gotta commit. You gotta get in there. Yeah, you guys are doing it. Commit, commit, let's go, let's go. Come on. Alright, linebacker's taking a lot of damage. Yeah, he needs to rotate out. He, he's staying on the front of the pack. Uh, the Mad Cat kind of stopped forward momentum just a little bit, but this... But the linebackers get too aggressive. He needs he needs to rotate his armor out so they don't lose mechs too quickly. Uh, but it looks like Unfearing in this Annihilator is going to be just devoured. He is sur being surrounded. Uh, the Nova Nova uh, gets taken out. Uh, Annihilator does go down. Uh, Paint Sucker and the linebacker is surprisingly still alive. The Summoner up top, they're all really close so they can't really uh, hit him. But it looks like the linebacker went dead after Unfearing died. Um, Kid Kinzu is... Uh, about to be 3v1, he pushed in off on his own, unfortunately. Jinder 2C uh, laying into Captain Judas. Uh, I think this... Mad Cat is stuck here in the corner, unfortunately. Now, I will... The push went bad. Um, they telegraphed it, and SA was a able to get a firing line around it unfortunately but I will say this they committed so they didn't make the same mistake as the last game uh, I think their first target that they chose um, I think I think they chose the An Annie to push and as we see here as this fight finishes up over here um, a few mac uh, the Annie backed himself into a wall and like the mad cat and all this they just gave them they got Psycho, uh, I would not be surprised if he doesn't have a really good game on this one. Got those back shots in. Uh, unfortunately, the push didn't pan out, but, you know, they didn't, like I said, they didn't make the same mistake as last time. Now, looking at the damage numbers here, yeah, Psycho, 636 damage, uh, uh, and he just got those back shots. Uh, here in a second, I'll show you guys on the mini map. At least from my casting perspective, what they could have done. As someone who used to be, everyone, well, everyone still makes fun of me for rushing and lerms. I blame my I team for that. FFE's, I thought FFE's push on this map was pretty solid. They committed to it. They took the out, took out the Annie um, very well. Uh, the, the, the push, I've got nothing to complain about. I just wish they had that level of commitment on the last map. On this map, I think pushing in that way is a mistake because as you said they telegraphed it but did they because it's very difficult not to telegraph that kind of push on this map there are so many high ground spots that the opponent team can jump up upon and see that kind of push coming early i'm not sure you can push that way without telegraphing um you're so you're right uh let's look at the map chat i'll show you what i th what happened what i think they could have done different let's get all these cleared off um, so, SA, let's get red, make it easier for people to, SA moved mechs here to D5, moved to mech up here, uh, and then mechs here, right? So they kind of had almost like a firing line, uh, does it have an arrow? I don't want an arrow. They had, I think, Summoner was kind of up here, maybe up here. I'm not, oh no, hang on, that's the wrong side. Uh, SA were on Team 1 side. Uh, SA was Team 2. FFE was Team 1. Were on the they? Side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh no, All right, yep. Because FFA did this run. They went like this. Now, as you can see, uh, at least from, in my opinion, you know, the, nothing was wrong f 
was wrong for the most part, except for two key things. Uh, they didn't take assaults to keep up with the rest of the mechs. So the assaults, when they crossed this open ground, all these, the three mechs that were up over here, you know, free shots. The mech that was up here, free shots. Uh, I think it's this this J hook, what they did was wrong. So they pushed the middle of the enemy firing line. Let's say the enemy firing line was across these three um, sectors. They pushed the middle of it, and that which allowed the guys in D7 and the guys in D5 to collapse on them, right? And got unlimited back shots. Um, I think if they sent a mech out this way, they did send the fire starter out this way, but and he knew these mechs pushed up here. So what they should have done is once they saw these mechs went up here, this fire starter saw that, uh, that should have telegraphed to them, and he should have told his team that they needed to change their push direction. That's where I think this went wrong. The push was fine. Um, I think the push direction was bad. I think they should have did this, right? Uh, come up here to D5 first. Wipe these three mechs out. Then the rest of the enemy mechs are now just in a single firing line, right? No one can backshot you anymore. You finish these mechs here, and then you you dive on the rest. Um, what they yeah, did was yeah, that's assuming that's assuming they knew these mechs were there. I'm not, well, the fire starter got chased by the black lantern, the executioner, and the wolfhound, right? Um, okay. It, they chased him down this, uh, down right here, and that's when they they went up top, and then the fire starter came back around and joined the push this way, right? Something like that. I'm not exactly 100 percent certain where the fire starter went, but I do think that um, when this fire starter saw these mechs running this way, uh, this whole push uh, with these mechs were down here before they crossed out in the open should have changed formation and went this way. Uh, hmm. That's the that's the key difference between a, the successful push and an unsuccessful push. Because like I said, they pushed right in the middle of the enemy team where their biggest mech was, which, uh, which some, which was a bad idea because of the mechs over here and over here. But like you mentioned, I'm glad that they pushed it, and I'm glad they committed. Uh, team one is locked. Team two is on timer. Uh, but yeah, so. I will say, maybe Annie has a strong like Overwatch support mech. If uh, maybe they got the Annie and the Death Strike up here instead of pushing in with everyone else, you know, little changes. Um, like, like I said, I don't think their, their their strat was bad. I just think they aimed it in the wrong direction. You know, it's like slingshotting. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to disagree with you on that. I I don't think a push strat is good on this map. But um, yeah, we'll call it quits. So let's move on to Power Islands. And we're back to this map again. How's it going to play out? I think a push strat on this map is more viable. Uh, there's lots of low ground you can take to get into the fight while avoiding damage. Um, this map is more unfamiliar to all teams. I mean, it's a brand new map. Basically, it's only a couple of weeks ago. Or Don't week NASCAR ago. Gamma. We learned last no, time. Yeah. Don't NASCAR Gamma. <laughs> Try not to, at least. Tactical <laughs> circling. Yeah, tactical circling. Um... It's why SAS Team 2, SA is really good at the range stuff, and they're being, their wolf pack is very strong too, so. Um, I think I think they'll play for the outside caps. SA, I don't know if they'll go for Gamma. I think FE from Team 1, they'll try FC's Gamma, maybe Kappa. Uh oh, no, 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 no. Sorry, that was my son trying to put his uh, Hot Wheels on my desk. Uh, so, I don't know. I, I think SA will put trading max kind of like what we saw EMP do and kind of what RGF did. They'll uh, maybe not put them back here. They'll probably put them like up here. And then um, when FE go for the push, uh, they might try to, to you know, circle. Because that's what happened with uh, RGF, how they ended up, how this became a NASCAR in the last drop is, uh, I think it was, oops, pushed here. RGF br jumped from their positions, came around here to where oops was just at and then yeah that's how that that's another out. that's another interesting point you just touched on actually maybe inadvertently um who you train with in between matches who you scrim with uh, during the week is uh important um you pick up a lot of your best strategies and builds from uh training with scrimming with people that are better than you hopefully in a higher tier or yeah higher division um, yeah, teams should be aiming 
as high as possible. Even if you get slaughtered all the way during the week, you get like two or three scrims during the week and you get killed in all of them. There's always a lesson to be learned. And hopefully when it comes to match time at the weekend, that makes you stronger. Yeah, uh, and both, I think, uh, both teams are ready. I'm going to punch this and then you can keep talking because we still got to right. I didn't mean to interrupt you, just letting you know we were launching. Continue. Oh, no, 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 it's fine. Uh, I actually want to watch. I don't want to talk anymore because uh, I like talking about the match. <laughs> now, uh, SA is at 3-0 against FFE. FFE still has two more chances to pull out um, a surprise victory. Uh, they did lose 0-5 against CSPS, but against CXF and DPS, FFE fought them to 1-4. Uh, so it is not unheard of about them being able to pull out uh, uh, a lucky win one drop. I shouldn't, you know, I'm not going to say lucky win because that, because it was skill. They did good on those drops and they earned the win. Well, from drop to drop, we've seen an improvement at least on their their uh, brawl push. They were a lot more assertive on the last drop than they were the, the drop before. Uh, I'm on, looking uh, here at Smoke Adder, Psycho in the Night Gear Age, Judas, Black Lantern again, Aquintus, and the ex Executioner, Therix and a Vulcan, Commando 1D, Grasshopper and Annie. Uh, Unfearing in his Annie again. I think it's the same one he's been running so far this whole time. Nope, this is three ear large lasers and two ear peeps. Interesting combination of weapons. Uh, what have we got on the other team? All right, Mr. Space Rat is in a Daka Blood Asp. Uh, Paul Myers in a Daka Rifleman. Uh, Dr. Karas is in a PPC Daka Kodiak. Interesting build. What else do we have? Pain Sucker in the Black Lantern again. Looks like that's his thing for this match. Kid Kinzu is in the Vulcan. And I think that's it. Oh, Little Mick in the Firestar again. Um, it looks like both teams are going for Gamma with a wolf pack of three. SA does get Gamma first. Vulcan kind of coming in first on his own. He probably... Probably needs to wait because he's about he's gonna get dived by three mechs. Linebacker is now is it still hasn't joined the fight. Now there's a fire starter. It's now just a black lantern and a Vulcan versus a Vulcan Black Lantern commando. Um Judas in the commander of Bale, Therax, uh he's starting to get focused a little bit. Kid Kin Kinzu um just looks like he's gonna just take the cap back. Uh Pain Sucker hopefully doesn't get baited. Which he might be if he keeps going forward on his own. Uh, oh, they caught the fire starter. Not for long though. Fire starter does take some damage. Uh, nothing important. Uh, Executioner did just scare off the black lantern. Smart yeah, that he pulled away. Second needs to be careful. He's overcommitting a little bit there. Yeah, for sure. It's good to see them backing off now. Hopefully they can escape. Now all of now here's the thing, all of SA's mechs, all but one, are now in the gamma area. Um, and only four of FFE's mechs are anywhere near gamma. One is actually heading to Kappa right now, so they only have three in the center. It's six v three in, in near the center, while uh, they have three mechs going off to some uh, looks like the Theta. I don't know how well that's gonna work out. Um, but FFE's they mechs are pulling off of, gamma. of off of gamma. Um, they're kind of just spreading out at this point. Not exactly sure what their plan is, but we'll find out shortly. The other three mechs are on a long, long walk to fame. Confirming that we have possession of Kappa. If he taken nice. Kappa now, they could have sent one mech for that, but they've kind of run off with all three. And, uh, now FFE pushing... is taking the Kodiak again. That should be interesting. See how that performs. Uh, this map is a little bit more ranges than that thing has. Uh, Mr. Space Rat uh, has an airstrike dropped on him. I think he's going to dodge it. He barely dodges it. Uh, but FFE, three cap. They have the three cap right now. And only one mech uh, over here. Therax over here. Bull uh, just keeping a mech in the area. <laughs> now let's, let's take a look on the other side of the map. Um, FFE's mechs are coming in. 
I think they're getting too close to the center. I think right now the best play for them is to go for the outside caps while most of the SA's mechs are inside, but... but we'll see. Uh, it looks like Kid Kidzu and Paint Sucker stuck in a little fight here in the center. Judas pulls off. Commando pulls off. Um, these guys are changing who they're shooting at constantly. I think they just... Uh, pick a mech. Ooh! Firestar gets nailed by Goss by the Night Gear! His CT is almost busted open. Uh, I don't think he can take another hit like that. Commando's Con is, legged. Uh, he's legged, yeah. Commando's legged. They need to stop focusing and leave him, leave him, and just get out of his uh, SRM range. Firestarter. No. no, no, Firestarter. What are you doing? Ah, yeah. Oh, big. Judas coming back forward. Judas, both legs are open. Oh, this linebacker can't poke again. Oh, don't poke again. Don't let, don't let them take your legs. Paint Sucker's in trouble here, he's being ganged up on, he's being surrounded. He takes Rick down on the way, good job. Oh, can they take Judas out? Can they take Judas out? They have to stay on his legs! They got his legs! They got Judas' legs! Can they drop Judas before he drops the Vulcan? They do! Nice. They do! The, oh, Black Lantern is, is, is still leg though. If they can take uh, the executioners down, they're in really good shape. Doesn't look like they can do that though. Linebacker is cored, but he still has both his Main legs. He, sh he cannot take this fight. He does not want to take this fight. Uh, he is their last mech to control caps, uh, and he now goes down. Uh, it's just the three trading mechs off uh, at Theta. Now SA is just going to turn around and take all over the ro take Kappa, Epsis, Sigma, and Gamma, um, and flip this around real fast. Because they no longer have to fight this. Uh, there is a late commando, but they still have a Vulcan on the field that can run around and cap. Uh, they, they're definitely, they're definitely not going to be able to hold three cap. Uh, they still have the mechs to do it, but I don't think, I don't think there's enough of a gap difference that if they can manage to hold two caps to still win. Well, SA's commando is kind of out of it. He's legged, so it's 3v4 as far as I can tell. It might be 3v4, but uh, don't forget SA still has a Vulcan on the field, a healthy Vulcan, who uh, is yeah. currently on Kappa. He's going to take Kappa, come around, take Epsis, and then um, just come back and take Theta. Uh, these, yeah. these three mechs... Um, I, th I think... Uh, I think the issue is they let SA put their whole team between um, the lights and these three off in Theta, and SA took advantage of that once they saw that uh, there was nothing going to be nothing to support uh, these mechs over here. Now, Old Man in his commando is just still waddling around. Looks like he's heading over to his executioner. Um, SA taking uh, back caps. Uh, so we'll see if we'll see if FFE can still pull out another killer or so. Um, Executioner might be something they could take on. This blood ass is looking really hurt, though. Um, he's not too bad. Uh, but his Ultra AC 10's been critted out, and that side torso is almost gone. But he still has three UAC 5s, which is... It's not a lot of firepower, but it's better than nothing. The Raph Missile has all six AC 2s. And the Kodiak. Oh, what is... Oh. I think the Bloods just lost his bad torso to the Executioner. Yeah. He still has his three Yark 5s. Executioner's getting a little CT weak, but his Blood Ass cannot be trying to take him on one-on-one. -on -one. He needs a he needs backup. Or his Executioner's is going to pop drive to death. Well, my eyes coming in now to back him up, see if they can make some progress on the uh, taken Executioner. Execution is running, he's like dropping down into the low ground. They could get him still, I think. They might be able to pick off the Executioner, but I think this is just a delay tactic by SA. Keep these three here while they go take all the caps around. Um, oh yeah, sure. Execution is going to go down. Uh, the 
we got the executioner down now. I think with a with as close as it is with a two cap, or now that SA has a four cap, I don't think it is. But with a two cap, they might have been able to still win. Um, they can't just sit here and hold Gamma, and they don't have enough time to go back to Theta. Uh, it does look like Rifleman will be taking Kappa, but I don't know if that'll be enough. Vulcan's coming in. This Vulcan no. is going to just... Don't, they don't have anything quick enough now to retake the cap, so at least they can try and pull another kill. Oh, I thought... Uh, fresh Vulcan, though. That's going to be tricky. Vulcan's going in for the cap. Oh, no. Oh, no. None of you guys are going to see it. Vulcan's going to get the back shots on the Blood Asp. Yep, yep. Vulcan's going in for the kill. Kodiak just got yeah. shot from somewhere. I'm not sure where. Ah, oh, from Theta. Blood Asp goes down. Man, these have been some really close matches. Come on, FFE. Ah, oh, doing great. Just a little bit more. And you guys can still pull out a win. Not on this drop, but the next drop. Because uh, you're going to lose on caps even before this Kodiak dies. Yeah, good games. Um, only real criticism I've got of FFE is early on their target focus on their uh, for their uh, wolf pack was pretty bad. They were all shooting at different targets. They weren't very well coordinated. So that's something to work on from from their point of view. Mm -hmm. Their axe with this sexy Vulcan paint. GG's both teams. Uh, FFE GG. actually fighting Smoke Adders pretty well these drops. Uh, other than once, it has not been a steamroll or a stomp. Uh, SA oh, no. fighting tooth and nail to win these drops. But FE, you still got one more shot to pull a win and then cause the biggest upset in Div B history <laughs> by forcing a three-way tie. Let's do it, FE. Force that three-way tie. Let's go in one drop. Whether FFE are a fish out of water in Div B, I'm not sure. That's debatable, but they're put, they're putting up a good fight. Um, they're yeah, they're making a good account of themselves. I'll say that. Damage wise, pretty good spread from FFE on fearing uh, for SA in the any one P six thirty six damage. That's good. Executioner acquitted itself well. Three kills, five hundred damage. And the game ends, you'll have to carry on. Um, alright, I gotta swap teams. The last drop. Yeah, Essie goes back to team one. Alright, teams are swapped, and I just gotta do the map. Last map is Hibernal. Now, we've all played this map in quick play. We all know how painful a uh, rotation by fast mechs can be, especially with uh, kind of pushing at it. Uh, okay, looking at the stream. Is that choppy for everybody? Or is that just my playback of the stream that's choppy? Let me know in the in the chat, guys. Uh, Alright, teams are swapped. Team 1, 5 minutes. Alright. Last drop of the evening. Um, I don't think there's any more games tonight. Well, there, sorry, there is one more game tonight. That would be Bears Brawlers 256 versus somebody. Don't remember who. Uh, Raptors Eerie. Yeah, our Dapper Raptors. Uh, that will be at like 10.30 tonight. I don't know if it will be cast. Uh, if it doesn't, if it's not going to be cast, I might try to cast if I have the time. But I have been doing this since um, 3 this afternoon, and it is already 7. Non-stop, too. All right. Yeah, um, looking at acronyms, the next match is... 1 a.m. UTC AW versus TSLL. No casters for that so far. I'm tempted, but that's 2 o'clock in the morning for me, so I'm probably not going to be able to make that. And after that, we've got Sunday. Uh, 8 p.m. UTC JDX versus BO. And 
2.30 a.m. UTC, Raptors versus 2.56. No casters for those matches yet. Hopefully someone will pick them up. We'll find out. Okay, I just, yeah, uh, turns out that, yeah, people are seeing my cast at like 5 frames per second. That's not good. Um, I don't, not really anything I do settings-wise, I haven't changed anything since I started. I did just get the notification of drop frames from OBS, so. But it says it's all working fine now, so. Could just, must have just been a hiccup. Um... All right, while we wait on team one, let's go to the map strat. It'll be the last map strat of the evening. Um, you already have it pretty prettied up and, and dolled out. Uh, don't change a thing, because I think you're actually pretty right. Uh, that's because that says team one, so yeah. Uh, FFE might try a brawl rush again. Um, they did fairly decent trading last time. Uh, their, their wolf pack is still being beaten by SA's wolf pack. Barely, but it still is. Uh, so we'll see what happens. They just they just need to get a lucky pick. It's all they need is one good lucky lucky pick. And um, this last match will be theirs. Uh, I expect the fight to be... Well, last time I said I was going to be like cap and stuff, but that didn't really happen, did it? No, difficult to tell. Yeah, I, I don't really have much for predictions. I mean... You can see where the arrows are, uh, and the lines is roughly the places you'll see mechs go. Um, so we'll see if that's what happens. Yeah, the only re the only thing I can really predict is that Gamma and Sigma are going to be taken by uh, Team 1 and Team 2, respectively. Uh, Theta is obviously going to be a point of contention, whether one team or another can get an early light mech on there without being slaughtered. Uh, Kappa and MC are on the outliers. Uh, there are good places to overwatch those two points and deny caps. Um, we've seen Brawl from FE, FFE for the last three drops now? Two, three drops? Uh, not so... the last drop. Uh, the first three drops. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, but last drop they did do the range thing and it, it actually worked out for them. Yeah, it did. It was a close fight. Um, they 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 made a good a good account of themselves. Tripping over my words. It's getting so late. I. How after you've been talking to yourself for four hours, you know get, things just get weird. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you coming and casting this with me. Um, I know we do the uh, MWO leagues and cop shout out uh, every match, guys. But like always. Um, if what you see, if you're not in the cop, uh, if you if you're not currently doing cop and you're just and you're, you're just tuning in and seeing all this, I highly encourage you to find a team and try it out for yourself. Cop is fantastic; it's an experience unlike any other, and um, it's regimental style. Uh, still leaves a lot of room for teams to do, you know, their own unique thing, uh, while also having a set of ground rules that everyone has to follow to keep every game from devolving into um, you know, the mindless monotony of quick play <laughs> Absolutely, get some friends together come and join us, form a team there are rewards for pretty much every team that's going to register for the, the World Series uh, coming up in August I think and uh, yeah, do it Yeah Alright Mitsu I'm aware it's choppy Calm down. All right, team one is locked. Now go into team two. Talking to chat for a second. Do you have your preview disabled in? Um... No, I don't have my preview. IBS. Disabled. No, it's the only way I can make sure that like I'm, that everything's good. So no, I don't have the preview disabled. Um, right. Um, once you're in, once you're in the drop, disable it. 
that right. may be why it's choppy. Uh, you lose a lot of frame that way, frame rate, frame drops, things, things happen. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. I'll try that out after this drop. Try it in this drop. That's that's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day. Leave me alone. Oh, sorry. All right. <laughs> now it's all good. It's been a great series of matches today. I'm just, uh, I'm glad they got casted. Every team deserves to have their games casted, for better or worse. Right? Rewatching your own replays, uh, rewatching the teams you face on a daily basis play, um, it helps everyone get better. Uh, Absolutely. Misanthrope is locked, so that's team two ready now too. All right, we are going to punch it. Get rid of that overlay, so. That doesn't disturb people. And here we go. Last drop of the evening. Yep. SA 4 0 gets FFE. FFE has this is their last chance to pull a win out. And we here in the casting community, we believe in them. We believe in Harvey Dent. I mean, we believe in FFE. My, apparently, my Discord it is exploding. What's going wrong? Why is everyone DMing me? It's usually not a good sign. Oh, okay, it's, it's already issues we've already fixed. Okay. What is this Rafflemen? Command coming in. Capture and hold the resource point. Stop that is a Rotary 5 Irby. Enemy um, we have Warhammer uh, 2C4 Slepnir. Uh, a Rack 5 Irby, a Warhammer Black Widow, Bushwhacker X1, Rifleman 8D, and Firestarter S. Um, what we got on Smoke at our side? Uh, let me see. Smoke at us have a Warhammer 6D, a Vulcan 5T, a Vapor Eagle 1, a Wolfhelm 2, an Annihilator 1P Executioner, and a Commando. Now, Little Mike in the Firestarter, um, He's already taking some shots, uh, traveling out in the open on the top like that. Um, his armor is already down uh, 11%. That, that, that could spell trouble later, uh, if he keeps taking hits like that. Now, SA has a two-cap lead. It looks like FFE is definitely going in. They're going to go all out. They're going to go for it. The Annie has spotted it. The Annie has spotted it. This push is moving. I saw, I'm seeing lerms. I'm seeing a lot of lerms on, on Fearing's Annie. Oh, whoa. Like, oh, the humanity he is being eaten alive. Uh, he is just taking damage everywhere. But, oh, Black Widow goes down. Oh, early death. Paul Mayers, rest in peace. Oh, he was XL. Oh, he got XL checked. This K9 and this rifleman are definitely pushing the Annie. Um,. The rest of these mechs stop pushing, the Cyclops is just trading around the corner with the Bushwhacker and the Warhammer, uh, which might just spell death because SA's wolf pack is now in their rear. Uh, Rifleman goes down, this Annie it just will not stop fighting. Uh, K9, I'm sorry not the K9, but the, uh, the Irby mech was on him, but it looks like he peeled off to go after the Executioner, leaving the Firestarter to fight the Annie alone. Oh, Annie uh, legs the oh, fire starter. Oh, fire starter's been legged. Fire starter's going down. The Annie survives. Oh my god, I didn't expect that. Annie finally goes down. Yeah, Bushwhacker finally finished off the Annie. Bushwhacker in the uh, uh, there goes the Lord Mech, leaving only the Slepnir uh, to fight these three mechs on, on their own. I don't think it's going to work out well for him. Yeah, the command is just stopping into his butt uh, while he focuses on the uh, Wolfhound. Um, now he's turning to face the Wolfhound, now the Vulcan up there on the side is getting the back shots. He is, he is done for. Uh, Bushwhacker and Irby just still going W. I can't believe this Irby survived as long as it did, uh, with the armaments it had. Um, but there we go. Smoke Adder's just won second place in Div Beef with a 5-0 victory against FFE. Leaving CSPS and DPS, uh, to go up with the tiebreaker for third. And as far as I am aware, 
CSPS wins the tiebreaker between just those two. Uh, I do hope so. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the final standings of Div B were just made. First place, CXF. Second place, Smoke Adders. Third place, DPS. Fourth place, CSPS. And fifth place, FFE, with uh, sixth place being um, F37, who, withdraw in, who withdrew in week two. It is over. GG's both teams. FFE, that was a weird deck you took on, on, on High Burnal, but either way, you guys put up a valiant effort in this division this year, um, this season, I should say. I really hope to see you guys back in Worlds um, to get to get uh, playing more together and maybe earn some of that street cred back. Uh, SA, with the 5-0 win to steal second place from CSPS and DPS, you little bastards. <laughs> <laughs> But hey, that's, that's, that's just how it goes. Um, yeah, interesting division, interesting tournament. Um, great, well played, all teams. I love this stuff. It's really good. I live for it. And uh, World Series is coming up soon, so uh, stay tuned for that. Obviously, not for another month, but uh, it's coming. And uh, form your teams and get in there and uh, claim your rewards. Come and join us. You couldn't just throw one match essay. Just for me. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You guys earned your win. Well done. Yeah, well played. And Judas wants to have my kids. Love you too, Judas. Everyone, this has been do That's Dobius. I'm Level. And thank you all for coming to our cast today. Um, we hope you guys had as fun watching as we had uh, casting it for you. Uh, like I said, there might be one more game coming late tonight around 10.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I think that's 2.30 a.m. UTC. Um, so if that match gets casted, please come all and cheer it all on. Um, you got anything else to add, Dubious, before we call it? Uh, no, thanks for watching. Uh, great game, both teams, and uh, good night. Yep, good night, everybody.